City of Stephen Point Board of Park Commissioners Meeting, recorded June 1, 2022. We're at 6.30, shall we commence? Yes. All right, good evening everybody. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Parks Commissioners for June 1st, 2022. Uh, Todd, you wanna start by calling the roll, please? Where's the names at? <laughs> <laughs> we might be a little choppy tonight, folks. Bear with us. <laughs> Alder McEro? Here. Mm -hmm. I like to go by some of the names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here. John O'Connick? Uh, here. I can't remember. Ginger Kimmer. Ginger Kimmer. Ginger Kimmer. Here. Okay. Shore. Alder Shore. Here. Wayne Sorensen. Here. Mike Ladusky. Here. Bob Freckman. Here. Liz McDonald. Here. And Sean Sh 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 There you go. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> First time you have And the best as we can tell, we have quorum. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so before we jump into the agenda, I do want to make an acknowledgement, and I want to thank uh, Commissioner McDonald for bringing this to our attention. Uh, David Smith was a former faculty member at the university uh, in, I believe, music and theater, uh, passed away recently. And the reason we're pointing this out is that uh, Dr. Smith had a pretty significant impact on some of the work the Parks Commission does. In particular, he opened the Scarabocchio Museum uh, and then uh, turned it over with its contents to the city of Stevens Point, and now it is part of the Parks Organization. So we want to recognize him. He was also heavily involved in the, concert, uh, the city band as well. And I know we use um, we use Piffner as a um, as the location for that. So I just want to acknowledge his passing uh, and some of the contributions he had to the work that the Parks Commission does. Uh, so having said that, uh, we'll move on to agenda item number two, which is approval of the May 4, 2022 meeting minutes. John, would you? I'll second. All right. We have a motion to second. Are there any questions or discussion on those minutes? All right. All those in favor of approving, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to agenda item number three, a presentation and consideration of the donation agreement for the convent park parcel. And I'll be, uh, I'd be really happy to turn it over to Director Karnowski and representatives from the Sisters of St. Joseph Convent Chapel. Director, thank you, uh, Chair. I gotta say, Todd, that was the best roll call <laughs> <laughs> I think I've ever seen. And I've been to a lot of these meetings, so kudos to you, sir. off the cough guard mm -hmm. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure Dan puts in your performance email. So, uh, good evening. I'm Ryan Kurdowski. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Director of Community Development for the City of Stevens Point. I don't get to interact with the Parks Commission that often, so it's always exciting to, uh, to be here. Uh, for the record, I worked for the state and county parks when I was in college, so I've got a real appreciation for what you folks are doing. So um, before we really get into it, um, before you tonight is a consideration of a donation agreement between the city, the Sisters of St. Joseph, Third Order of St. Francis, um, and the developer, General Capital. Um, as you might recall, a few months ago, we actually toured the potential park site uh, with Director Kramer and, and members of this uh, commission um, and had some really good conversation about what the park parcel could be as part of the donation agreement. Um, but part of the reason the sisters are here tonight was there was a conversation about the grotto component. Um, as uh, I'll just give a quick uh, historical overview, but um, the, the convent site itself uh, is a recipient of significant tax credits uh, through housing and economic development, uh, federal funds for uh, low moderate income housing, and for historic tax credit purposes. Um, within the historic tax credit purposes, any structure on the site has to remain for a minimum of five years. Um, otherwise, you're at jeopardy of losing your tax credits, which could put the whole project in jeopardy. Um, so that not only includes the convent uh, building itself, but all the outbuildings and the grotto component as well. Uh, and so there was a, and, and Director Kramer and I had, had a lot of conversations about, you know, if this were to be donated as a park, which, which um, I apologize, normally I have this really intense memo that nobody ever reads, but it makes me feel really good putting together. Uh, you know, the whole purpose of the, the park parcel was to help uh, close one of the most significant gaps in the city's 10 minute walk to a park campaign. Um, and uh, Director Kramer and I kind of had the uh, assumption that we would move forward with retaining the grotto for the minimum of five years and then uh, after the five years the grotto would come down because it would no longer be uh, under the purview or under the rules and regulations of historic tax credits. Uh, to our 
mild surprise, the Parks Commission seemed to have a different approach with the grotto. Um, and and uh, more conversation about, well, is it worth retaining? You know, there is some historical significance to the community with the grotto uh, as well. And I, I thought, who better to talk about the history of the grotto um, or the lack of history of the grotto than two of the sisters, uh, Sister Judy and Sister Michelle, to give you a little bit of a presentation overview. Uh, as I said a few months ago, it's really not the purview of this commission to talk about the historical significance of the grotto. That's really historic preservation, uh, which is another commission that the city has. Uh, but you know, you will ultimately make a recommendation to finance and a city council on your interest in accepting the donation agreement as presented. Within the donation agreement, there is a component um, that, that outlines the removal or raising of the grotto after five years. And that would be the responsibility, essentially, of uh, the developer to cover those costs. So um, I guess I'll turn it over to Sister Michelle and Sister Judy. I'm happy to answer any other questions before we do that from the commission, uh, but uh, also here to uh, kind of facilitate a conversation, uh, but would recommend that uh, you folks accept the donation agreement as presented. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. First of all, um, Skate City sisters there, <laughs> and the sisters of St. Joseph, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're asking to serve alcohol, and so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so first of all, I would like to thank the city for even their, your support and your investment in the repurposing of the convent. This is really showing um, the, the collaboration of a 21st century among all of us. So thank you for, for your leadership in doing that. And that collaboration reflects our Franciscan values as Sisters of St. Joseph, Third Order of St. Francis. It brings us a sense of belonging to everyone, and that's what the project is supposed to do. A bonding of others in view of circles of compassion and peace. The collaboration of donating, donating that land for a city park also ref reflects our Franciscan values of sharing the sisters' resources for the common good and using that what is ours as a vehicle for the care for the earth. That's very important to us. So as we consider the grotto within this context of Franciscan values, which we stand for, we reflected on the 1923 construction of Tufa Rock, which once served an era of individual devotion for the students at the academy. Over the last five decades, the grotto has diminished in importance and has not existed <coughs> in the communities, community litur liturgical celebrations and Catholic traditions. The grotto has deteriorated. The trees have grown up around it and even the roots underneath it. It has collected moss, decay, and has become very dangerous. The falling rock, in fact a huge piece on the top, fell about three years ago. On occasion we have tried to fill in the cracks for the reasons of safety, and it has not helped, and has continued to break apart. Therefore, the Sisters of St. Joseph, Third Order of St. Francis, totally support the renewal of the grotto after the five-year tax-exempt clause. We would like to see the rock, if it could be, crushed into small stones to create a walking path through the Cathedral of Trees on the new campus, a path of prayer for everyone. This would enhance our Franciscan vision that involves the faithful stewardship of our property in ways that enhance communal growth and environmental sensitivity. So any questions? I would like to uh, make a comment that uh, Tufa Rock in itself is quite valuable. It's uh, uh, 
to rock gardeners and people that grow specialized types of plants, uh, it's much sought after and it's expensive. And my wife, uh, she passed away some years ago, but she was a very avid uh, rock gardener. And I'll never forget the time that uh, she commented that she had ordered some two for rock for uh, for our garden and just mentioned, well, you got to go down to the Madison area and pick it up. And uh, I said, okay, fine, I've got a station wagon. And I said, oh, by the way, how much did you get? She said, two tons. <laughs> so, so I'm very much appreciated. <laughs> Um, well, maybe that rock could be used for the community <laughs> in, in any form you need to use it. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the point is it's rare. It mm -hmm. uh, forms in areas where you've got a lot of limestone, where water seeps through right. it very slowly, where it comes to the surface, where the change in temperature causes the calcium carbonate to precipitate. And my understanding is there's only a few areas that produce it. One of them is the area of the southeast, southwest corner of Lake uh, Erie around, That's where we were, around we, Toledo, that, which is famous throughout among all the rock gardeners. I mean, I don't know how famous it makes it on a worldwide basis. But, <laughs> uh, uh, but the point is, it's valuable. It's good stuff. Don't grind it up for him. <laughs> Use it. There are... There are um, plant people that would just love to have that that uh, uh, that whole structure take it down perhaps to some extent to make it uh, no longer a danger mm -hmm. but don't give up on, on, the, on the grotto. Well, that. we probably won't be around, so whatever you want to do with the rock, <laughs> for it. Well, I'm in my mid-80s. I'm not going to be around. <laughs> so it, it, it is what the community ever needed to be for in 123 years ago. We did, it was delivered from Cleveland, Ohio. Hmm. So it, had, it has served its purpose, and now the purpose does not exist. It needs the purpose of the five-year commitment. So whatever the city wants to do with the rock, it is yours to do with. You saw that station wagon? <laughs> 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 no, it got worn out. <laughs> <laughs> Any other tomorrow. questions? I guess we'll throw it open to the commission. Are there other questions for the representatives from the order? Elder Zarasula. Now do we have to worry about keeping people out of the park so they don't steal this rock? Mm -hmm. Is that <laughs> 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 what kind of fence do we plan to put around that in the short term? Well actually, why don't you that is kind of the next step. I guess what would you want to yeah. talk about kind of what we because again we we took a different direction the last time we were talking yeah. about this and you want to kind of talk about the updates and some of the things you've been working on since sure. then, please. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So um, since our, our last conversation uh, we had talked about just putting a chain link fence up around the grotto to, to prevent folks from um, entering the grotto and climbing on it. Uh, and then I think uh, Dan brought up a really good point that is if you try to prevent people from getting into it, they're going to get into it because now it's a challenge, right? Um, and so the proposal is that a essentially a, a split rail fence uh, would be put around it and that there would be some interpretive signage uh, talking about the significance of the grotto and outlining on that signage that you know this uh, is likely to remain uh, through what is essentially 2027 uh, that five-year time period kicks in once final occupancy is obtained uh, for the project itself uh, and then after 2027 it would be uh, removed crushed in the back of the station wagon whatever you want it to be um, and, and so uh, part of it is ensuring that folks in the community know what the long-term plan is for the grotto and so that in five years uh, if it comes down uh, there's not a giant public outcry uh, and I can guarantee now this meeting will be replayed at some point in the next five years when we said yeah we've already talked about this uh, this has already been part of the conversation um, and, and so that seems to be kind of the next step is the fence will go up the split rail fence will go up uh, we're working on some interpretive signage uh, and then the park would be transferred uh, once the donation agreement is signed uh, to the city uh, and and we would go through the process of uh, naming it and signing it and whatever else comes along with that so thank you so our role tonight is oh, go ahead Alder, there's one. 
So I was joking when I said, are we worried about people stealing it? But um, I guess I just want to say, like, this is awesome that we're having this input. The discussion before was more that it was like, in five years, we can dismantle the grotto. <laughs> grotto. You know, and we, we want to be aware of the history that's on this property and be respectful of it and just taking into consideration like what we can do that would still honor this property. So um, so it's it's amazing to be able to hear that we can go any direction we want to with it. I think we'll, you know, definitely work together and find a way that's appropriate to use this whether it's the station wagon idea or not. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think overall, like the idea of turning this section of that property into a park really adds to the collaborative effort that we've seen um, put into this project overall. Um, part of me was like, why do we need it to be a city park? Like, can it just be a part of the property that people can go to? But it really, it being a part of the city park system really does open it up as far as it being something that we all own a part of that and and can access that and, and bring people onto the property. So I'm just so thankful for everyone that's put time into this um, project and I'm glad for it to be part of my district. John. Sisters, do you have a wish for that property or is it a dream or, I mean, obviously there's lots of history there. Is there any direction that you would like the city to follow with it? I you mean, mean the park, park? Yes, yes. Just make sure that everyone's welcome and, and it's used and it's, they can enjoy the Cathedral of Trees. They talk to you. There's a lot of people that walk through that part and we have our, an honoring our sisters that no longer are with us. So that connection is threefold. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, uh, it's the dying and the living and the celebration. So the city has given us so much already and supported us, so we want to bless you with that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Alder Keener. I have a question um, for Forrester Ernster. How, in your opinion, like what's the state of the health of those trees? I mean, are they pretty stable or? Yep, when we, when we walked it up quite a long time ago now, um, from what I recollect, um, some of them, may, the spacing may be a little closer, but they seem to be all healthy. Um, there wasn't, I didn't see any disease. I mean, we went through there, I think it was in October, wasn't it? Or Yeah, yeah, was Todd was kind of like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> 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 Looking at that, but I didn't see anything like there was a bunch of oak wilt or, um, you know, big pine infestation or anything, you know, pine beetle infestation or anything. Like that. But um, I'd have to go through it again, which I would like to. <laughs> yeah, but no, I didn't see anything that stood out at the time. Great. In the last five years, we lost about 17. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. the weak ones are already gone. Mm -hmm. so In windstorms and, yes, yeah. Storms. So our job tonight is to consider the information presented and then to make a recommendation on the donation agreement as it was presented. So unless there are additional questions, I'll entertain a motion to move forward. So move. Mike Gladeski. What is yours? Was second? second. Other questions or comments? All those in favor of accepting the proposal uh, uh, put forward tonight for the donation agreement of the Covenant Park uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, motion passes. Director, sisters, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Keep, thank you. keep hope alive. <laughs> exactly. All right, agenda item number four is a proposal from the Boys and Girls Club to upgrade the courtyard between the rec center and the Boys and Girls building. And it's, yeah, uh, Peter Gebhardt is here to join us. So uh, feel free to go ahead and grab the mic and um, kind of walk us through what you're hoping to do. Did you guys have the uh, layout? Yep. in your packets it was presented in our packet so we've had it perfect so uh, we have been using that area um, in the summertime the kids go out there uh, and it's just it's unsightly the grass isn't growing there I don't think it was ever put in correctly for when we built the building and the other challenge we have during the summer is we have beautiful green space in the park but our kids are walking through the parking lot they're walking by the pool and the police department and we would just like an area closer to building where they don't have to go across the parking lot and whatnot. And we like to transform that into a concrete space that is, it looks better. Uh, it's presented better for people passing on Michigan. And it's more functional for the kids. So we'd add a, a gaga ball, four square activities for the kids to play in there. We would cover the cost uh, for putting it in. 
We've already raised uh, a bunch of the money for it, actually. So, great. Any questions? Uh, I guess, Todd, uh, thoughts from the staff perspective on this? Dan and I walked it. Um, we don't use it, um, other than the two small trees that are outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they're, they're, they're small. We're going to try to move those. Um, it is a... Uh, there wasn't enough solder that there was a driveway back there for probably a hundred years and they never broke it up so no, nothing's gonna grow there mm -hmm. um, and as long as we had access to our I think the, our half kind of runs through the middle of that technically I think as long as we have to use it for something we still have that that use yeah we have a gate there yeah for... but uh, and that really hasn't happened but uh, that that was our, our main concern is if we wanted to use that part for us um, that we would have access to that and they would cover the costs for the development. So we were good with it. Yeah. Liz. Uh, but Todd, do we retain uh, ownership? Does the city retain ownership of the property that they're talking about? For our half, from what I understand. We from do. my understanding, the city owns the entire property that the Boys and Girls Club is built on. And then we just have a 100 year lease on the property. So. Thank you. The city owns it. Yeah, I didn't see much I mean, I was thinking of little silly things like if I had some potted trees that I could keep them back along our side or something like that. But otherwise, we've never really, the only time I've gone back there was to water those two trees that were back there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> make a motion? Can we get a second. motion? Second by uh, Alder Keemer. Uh, any other questions or comments? I guess one thing to note, Peter, based on the recommendation from Director Kramer, there are some conditions uh, in terms that you've, it sounds like you all have talked about already in terms of permitting. Uh, and the, the city maintains the right to utilize a courtyard when needed. Uh, and then the Boys and Girls <coughs> Club agree to pay for the improvements and maintain those improvements. Is that correct? It? Okay. Yeah, we agree to that. So do we need to amend that motion based on those conditions? I will amend the motion as recommended in our notes. Is that where you read it from? That's where I read it from. All right. Alder Keemer, do you still second? Yes. All right, so we have a motion and a second to accept it with the conditions as presented by, uh, by the Parks Board, or excuse me, by the Parks Department. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Peter, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, Peter. All right, agenda item number five, a request from the mid Mid-State Sisters of Skate to serve alcohol in the KB Willett Arena on July 16th and August 13th during their events. And I believe we have a representative. You want to join us at the podium and introduce yourself? Oh, I have a loud voice. Perfect. Um, still, we still love to know who you are. I am Amanda. I am Games Director and Vice President of Mid-State Sisters of Skate. I think um, we, we have you probably were here. That's to the only way the video captures yeah. it. So. <laughs> You want me to start over? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm Amanda Heineck. I'm Games Director and Vice President of Mid-State Sisters of Skate. Uh, we have had this wonderful opportunity to finally get our Roller Derby League into Stevens Point. Uh, we have been around since 2010, um, which is indicated in the memo we provided for you, a little bit of history about us, um, but we have been all over. Uh, majority of our league members do come from Stevens Point. So being able to have this opportunity this year to skate two games at KB Willett has been at the top of our list of things that we've wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, we started skating in Arnott, if any of you are familiar with that area, um, and eventually moved to a Marathon in Wausau. We've also been able to have a game in uh, Wisconsin Rapids at their arena as well, and uh, now having this opportunity here to come this way. Um, we are looking to um, provide a roller derby game to the public um, and uh, have a good time as well. It's very family friendly. I don't know how many of you have ever been to a derby game before, but you better get it on your bucket list. <laughs> um, but we will be providing food and uh, obviously derby for entertainment and then asking to also serve alcoholic beverages as in canned beer is what we're looking to do. Sorry, I thought I had it off. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me? <laughs> Just, I, I, what, what, what are they? We charge to rent that facility, to use that facility. To KB Willett? Yeah. I can speak to that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so they will, they're negotiating with us contract with us to use that facility. 
practices, they get it for three hours for a $60 fee. And then games, um, which we provide a staff member for um, to supervise the building and we provide uh, cleanup afterwards is $400 per game. Okay. So we're making a little money on it. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good thing, and uh, you know I think it's something that we should support, and I'd definitely be in, in favor of approving this. Thank you. Is that a motion? Is that a motion, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have a motion. Can I second? You can, and I know. And, and I, I, I just wanted to to, um, to say because I have a little bit of history volunteering with the roller derby league, including taking the responsible server course and being the one in charge of alcohol sales oh. at previous bouts. So I can say I know exactly how seriously they take carding at the door and wristbands and, and everything else. So this is not a group that messes around with alcohol sales. So I feel very confident that uh, there won't be any problems with it. Great. So we have a motion and an enthusiastic second. Uh, are there any other questions uh, about the request? And again, we are, uh, we are I think, in, in this motion supporting their, their ask for additional movement down the road to a couple. So we, as a parks board, would be endorsing their request to move forward. All the zeros over. Just welcome to Stevens Point. Oh, <laughs> happy to have you here instead of us going out to earn it, which I did go out there and watch a game once. Yes, <laughs> we are very excited for this next step for us. No <laughs> torching No, not at all. <laughs> but it's a good use of space during a downtime Absolutely. as well for us, so as a parks uh, commission. You know, I'd just like to add, I, I, you know, I've, I've been in favor of the last proposal also. And, you know, I think, but I think it's, it's a good idea for that facility to be able to, to sell some alcohol for events. And it's going to help the city financially. And there's abs I see absolutely no reason if it's properly supervised why we don't allow it. Any other comments or questions before we call the vote? All right, all those in favor of the, of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations and good luck with those events in July and August. All right, moving on to agenda item number, wow, are we at six already? Uh, so, uh, number six, a revision of the Donald Cops uh, Municipal Pool Rental Policy. Ann. Hello everyone, uh, so in my um, work going through policies, getting ready for the upcoming season, I noticed there were some uh, policy that was a bit out of date, things that um, I'm looking to change to streamline um, my staff's job as well as make it more user friendly. Um, so I provided the edits in your packet. Um, I would consider them pretty minor. Uh, if you have any questions about any of them, I'm more than willing to talk about it yeah I was just curious about how often does the pool get rented and is that like a you know multi rentals a week kind of thing typically or yeah we already have several reserved um, for the second week the pool will be open and um, we haven't even advertised it yet so I anticipate there will be several uh, dozens of, of parties very yeah. good yeah You need a motion to approve these revisions? We will. Yep. Is that a motion? Make a motion to approve them. <laughs> second. <laughs> second. Very good job. A motion by O'Connor, second by McDonald. Uh, any other questions or comments for Ann? Ann, just one quick question about the cancellation policy in, in 3E. Um, it, it looks like it's just language to clean up. Help us understand a little bit about the if no rescheduled date can be found. Is that how long does that process take before you guys determine they're getting their money back? Right. It's it. It would be a conversation. Um, our first choice would be to reschedule, and um, and if that is not agreeable, you, you know, the date was the only date that could happen. Then we would be open to a refund. Um, you know, if we don't have staff on site, we don't incur costs. So there's no real harm to the city, the budget, anything like that. Um, in you know if it's all done in advance and I can call staff off which it would be if it was a weather issue great so any other questions 
All right. Otherwise, all those in favor of the changes as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the last agenda item, director's report. Well, let's hopefully I don't forget things like I did the names last time. <laughs> 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 all the names. Like, well, I could. So I panicked on right. Alder Keemer's last <laughs> name. Oh, I can't remember how to say that. So anyhow, we'll get past that. Um, the Iverson Park restroom, um, I, from what Dan was saying, that should be done hopefully in the early uh, this month, in the next week or two. Nice. So that'll be a nice addition uh, down in, um, in Iverson Park, because that's parks uh, heavily used, like all our parks. Um, the Mead Park uh, pickleball courts, I think that's been all over social media quite a bit. <laughs> uh, just a little bit, we've got lots of feedback. Um, almost 99% of it's been positive. Um, so I think that that's a really great um, addition. Uh, the grand opening is June 6th, right next Monday okay. at 4 o'clock. So um, I think the, I'm, I'm just surprised even, how, we knew it was going to be a big thing, but I'm surprised how big it really has become too. Um, and then Riverfront Rendezvous, um, all the schedules have been, uh, the, the bands have been booked, and that, that's all. I think it's been published, uh, so take a look at that. Dan has all of us working on uh, getting things in order for that, so we're, uh, that's moving forward. I just hope for good weather, and then I have to add my own two, two cents with the trees. We just got <laughs> done uh, getting 20 evergreens that we're putting in uh, Buco Park because we've lost a lot of big pine trees through wind storms and just old age and some other issues that we've had there. So the guys, I think they just got done putting those in today. So that'll, that'll be a welcome addition down there. And uh, Paul, I think he got in, that's the city arborist. He got in about 40 flats of flowers. So he's busy working on that. And I know Scott and Ann, I we're all getting our seasonal staff in and it's always a busy time of year when uh, you have all these new people coming in trying to train them. And, you want to say, okay, run over to Mead Park, and you think, oh, they don't know where that is. So <laughs> you have to go up to it. It's just all that simple stuff that, that takes a while to get everybody going. Are you fully staffed for yep. the summer? Okay, yep. we're real good. And, uh, and lifeguards, are we fully staffed also? Yep. Okay. Wow. Yep. In That's record great. time, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was good. So I'm, I think we're all pretty excited about the staff that we were able to put together. Cool. So, and considering the last couple of years, that's been a struggle. So, it's good to hear that we're not scrambling as we're getting ready to open. So, nice work. And and then we, the, I'm sorry. Okay. Then the, go, go ahead, John. Sorry. Any COVID restrictions, pools back to normal as far as, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. And then, since Dan put this out, um, um, the, uh, I just got to think of her name now. Katie Kramer, she just put, posted her resignation Aww. in, too. So, um, we'll be looking for a new director over there again. Mm. So it wasn't she just there like for a few months? Yeah. Okay. And that's a part-time position, correct? Yeah, I think that's part of the problem with all of it. Right. Well, this might be a good opportunity to talk about it a little bit. So if anybody watches this, they <laughs> might know about about that opening. Yeah. So it's a little time. Well, she was sure she did a great job, though. So yeah. Yeah, it's too bad. Any other questions? Is tree com planting completed for the spring, or are we? In yes, we are. Yeah, okay. we got it all. Um, yeah, they should have everything done. My compliments Thanks. to your staff. They did a very good job. Thanks. And uh, we contract a lot. Of, it was the Blesky brothers too. They did a good. We uh, went through some. Uh, um, I don't want to say training, but things that we wanted to accomplish, and they did. They did a really great job with everything. Great. So, uh, do you uh, do you have any idea of how many street trees were planted? I've noticed along some of the streets. Especially where there has been construction, there's a lot of new trees. It looks really good. We got we put in like 250 trees this year. Wow. Where wow. normal years about 125, but uh, I think 49 of them went in the new construction areas. Um, we put in about 30 or 40 of them in the parks to replace a lot of, like I said, uh, that, that we're um, replanting that through a grant that we got through the DNR. And um, then we did whole swaths of street. We did, like I talked, we got uh, John's Drive. I can't count uh, how many, I think we had like 29 there. And I think down Black Bear and Chickadee, we got that area. That must be about 40 trees down through there. So we did, we got some big, in the Fifth Avenue, First Street, we got all those done in that area. And then uh, St. Paul Street, I think. Patch Street? Oh, Patch Street, yeah, we got, yeah, I think there was, like, yeah. 18 or somewhere no, there. somewhere around there. Yeah, I don't have the numbers, but yeah. So we'll be uh, 
busy watering hole. I mean, probably. <laughs> so. Can you assume you'll do your PR that the residents are, you know, recommended or if they can to water the trees to help your staff out. Yep. When, we, when they get the flyers, we mention when we put the flyer by the doors, and then when we um, send the reminder uh, letter saying that if you have any questions or concerns, um, you know, please water your tree. And then we also uh, put a door hanger on the door. Uh, we're still put, going through that. And if we had a dry spell. Then we have a mass mailing with just little postcards that we send out. So but some people get confused when they see the tanker truck go by that they think that the tanker is always there to water. You know, and uh, th that's just to supplement it because on this dry sand it just goes right through. So uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're real, real excited about uh, we tried a bunch of different tree species so we're, we're happy about that. Great. So any other questions either on the director's report or, or what Todd shared with us? Yep. It's right. a compliment to your staff as well as yours, Ian, and mm -hmm. Scott's. You guys are doing a great job. A lot of, a lot of ball diamonds work. I know they're, yes. yeah. you'll go home, you'll see a lot of that. So Scott's guys have got a lot going on there, too. A question, too. I, I, I was on the Green Circle this weekend. It looks like the new section is complete out by the airport now, where it, it runs a little differently out there. Dan would be more in tune with that with the water department. I know yeah. that was on some water department land, and then with that fencing, yeah. there was some issues with that. I know it was fenced off for a long time, yeah. so I, um, I'll be honest, I wasn't aware that that, that was open now. But, um, yeah, I'm yeah sure it goes a little that. different route now. Okay, and then he'll be able to address that next, okay. next month. <laughs> Anything else? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. John O'Connick, is there a second? Liz McDonald, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Update nice. for next month. It'll be a beautiful day. Uh, they're expecting up to 3,000 people, which is going to be a tremendous thing. I think it's going to showcase one of our best parks along the river, and bringing that event into the park system really is a, a win for the department. So uh, every division's been involved in some capacity. We're really hoping to put our A-game forward to host that event, and we're hoping it's successful. We can build a long-term relationship there. So if you get an opportunity Saturday, get out of the house, come on down. It, it should be fun. Going on to other items just related to some more logistics, the KB Woolett roof update that we've been talking about, we had a, a roofing salesperson, so someone that represents a product, come and look at the roof. And essentially what they said is uh, what we're dealing with at the KB Woolett roof is that we have a metal, a metal sheet. There's obviously insulation and things underneath it. On top of that metal sheet, there's a couple layers. They, they put down a product that uh, provides insulation, and then they cover that with a membrane that's essentially supposed to keep you know, rain and snow and events out of it. There's fancier terms for it, but that's the simplest version I can, I can tell you. That roof was put on many years ago, and 10 years ago we did a recoating of it is what it's called. So they make a product that can be basically sprayed on in even application, all things being perfect supposed to be perfectly even and it's supposed to make the water sheet off like it's supposed to. When the water sheets off you don't have pooling. What we're being told from a roofing salesperson, I'm going to preface that, is that we had maybe not a thin application 10 years ago in 2001 or 2000, I think it was 2011. None of us were here so I can't tell you for sure, obviously I didn't see it. But what happened is, is if it wasn't thinly applied it allowed some of the water to pool. In addition we had the 2019 project where we were up doing drilling and things on the, on the roof for the new air handling unit. We have had issues with, with children climbing the roof, with, and we've had graffiti and things up there, so people have been on that roof through the years too. So the long and the short of it is we have some places that that membrane did not hold. So that's where some of those moisture things were coming in. We've done some basic patching, but where we're headed here is we have an independent roofing consultant coming soon. We're, we're hoping as early as next week, but at the latest the week after. They're going to do what's called a, a moisture scan. So they'll evaluate how much moisture is actually going through that membrane and how much damage is underneath, if, if at all, how much, or if, if it's something that can just be covered. And then they'll provide the options of, can a recoding happen again? That's what we had budgeted for. 75,000 is what's in our budget, it was a recoding. Things have gone up. So it, you know, if it's a recoding, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be somewhere closer to 100 to you know, 150,000 if it's a recoding. That's probably best case scenario. If they come back and say that the moisture scan identifies something else, now you're talking about roofing hardware. So that could be a different layer. So I don't want to scare anybody, but I do want to let you know that we're working on it and it's probably not a small fix. And when we come with it, we'll try to provide a full detail of our options. We hope to have more than just one option and we're hoping that maybe a recoding is still possible. What I would love to see for Utopia is if we could recode it and then budget for a bigger fix, that'd be great. Uh, and that's where we hope to land, but we'll see where that comes out as we get further into that. 
The next project was, was a, non, a non budgeted project, which was the van shell repairs. So, where we're at in that is we did go out for bid, and we had a number of contractors pull plans. And just due to timelines in the spring, only one contractor submitted. You'll recall that we rejected that bid. We have put that back out for bid now. Scott and I have been working with our consultant to get those things ready. Uh, we'll open those bids, I believe it's the end of May, and we'll be bringing that hopefully back here in June. And our intention is to try to redo the roof as well as fix the structure, the beam. We've got both specs out now for bid, and we're hoping that we'll get the same interest and more than we did the first time. So hopefully in June we'll try to make some progress on that. Nothing is preventing any events, so we're still moving forward, but we have to get ready for fall. We can't have that roof in the, in the situation that it's in. The Gerke Park Improvements update, I mentioned the fundraising goal where we're at. We're continuing to have some meetings. Uh, where we're at in the stage of the game right now is we've been looking for architects. So we've got a few proposals that we're evaluating. Uh, it's a budgeted expense, so that necessarily won't come here for review, but we'll be getting an architect started very soon. We've got a, you know, we want to be in the ground trying to do some digging already this summer. That's the goal. So it's a very aggressive timeline based on some of the dollars that are coming in. Really that ties to, in order to bring the pointer women to the facility, we really need to have a basement uh, at least done to move some of the equipment and teams around. So we're, we're moving fast on that and I hope to have a, a, a more large update next month and the months after. But uh, like I mentioned, the field will be in by the first. We hope to have the video board in by the first. So there's a lot of moving pieces to that. Several meetings. We'll continue to update you uh, as we go. On the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan, that is a major lift for the department. Where we're at in that stage right now is we're doing the, the, comp the compiling of, of acreage, the compiling of you know, how we're comparing to NRPA standards, how many parks we have, which ones are neighborhood parks. We're reclassifying everything. So there's a lot of data entry happening. Where we'll go from the data stage is going to be into the community feedback element. And that's where the Park Commission will definitely be invited, asked to participate. Following that, I anticipate a small subcommittee where I'll probably make a few phone calls. Anyone that's interested on this committee can definitely be a part of it, or we might review a few things before we bring it to the full committee. That way when we get in front of this board, it's more of a feedback before adoption towards the end of the year. So uh, we do anticipate a survey as well as in-person in meetings of some sort in the community. So hopefully we can kind of cast a broad net to anyone that wants to come in person or, or do it via a survey or online. The uh, grant updates item I wanted to mention is that we've had really three grants go in that are pretty, we're hopeful for. The first one is the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant that we applied with the uh, Park, Friends of Emerson Park. That did go off for May 1st, so we hope to hear something on that by the time we hit fall. That grant was for just under 400000 The TAP grant application that went in in early January, I will tell you that the DOT has received an influx of funding. So we've been hearing pretty good, basically pretty good whispers about that they're looking for more projects. They actually opened the TAP program back up, saying that they take more applications. I'm not going to jinx this, but uh, take, that for, take that for what it is. We're hopeful that that's good news for us as we get down to the later summer. They also are allowing us to submit an updated budget for that project. They said go ahead and increase the numbers based on the construction schedule. So uh, again, that, that, that seemed to be good news. So we're going to go ahead and submit that before June. And then the last one, we just completed a carbon reduction grant. Uh, and, and this, a lot of credit for both the TAP and this carbon reduction grant goes to actually Tori Jennings has been helping quite a bit. Uh, we submitted for two electric lawnmowers. So at our trade show in February, we were, we were around a, a lawnmower that's a rear discharge. I think it's a 74, 72, 72 inch deck, and it's an eight hour runtime. So there's some really nice abilities if we can explore that. We've not used zero turns for you know several years, so this will be a little bit of a test trial if we get it, but we did apply for that. It's an 80-20 grant, we're hopeful. The city's applying for some other vehicles and things and other departments but we did complete one for our department for two electronic, uh, for electric lawnmowers. So that's interesting. We're hoping that we can get that as well. So other than that, we're hitting our busiest time. Lots happening with Riverfront Rendezvous. We are, are hoping to add what's called Market in the Park to Riverfront Rendezvous. So on Saturday during the day, we're hoping to have, you know, some, uh, basically some vendors selling different things that we've not allowed in historically. So right now we're targeting like that noon to five window on Saturday. And uh, we'll have a full schedule hopefully by the time we hit the June meeting. So. Lots of good stuff going on, and uh, finally the sunshine's here, so I'll stop talking so we can get outside. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for the director? I, I just like to make one comment. <sighs> Maybe I'm out of line, but you know, I, I get out of the green circle a lot on my mountain bike and inspect it. And you know, I think green circle is something everyone in the city is proud of, you know, and it's really a crown jewel for Stevens Point. And there's one little area, it would be Ridge Road east of uh, Green Avenue, you know, through up to about 
where it goes over I-39. And there are so many potholes in there. I mean, I, I've been off-road on my mountain bike, and, and some of the <laughs> stuff isn't as bad as that. Those holes are deep. And we've also got that walk Wisconsin coming in June. And you got, you know, a whole bunch of people walking on that. I, I, I don't think it's even safe to walk on it with those holes in there. It's, it's if somebody's close to the... Well, yeah, I won't, yeah. I don't... Director may know more than I do, but I know that that area is on the summer replacement cycle. Yeah. Do you know more about that? Yeah. Or? Sounds right. Yeah, yeah, I, it, 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 yeah it, um, it is on the schedule. The last I, so that whole area was on the schedule. I do know that they were evaluating what was going to make the cut for the summer because of some of the increased costs. But regardless, I can definitely talk to Director Badoon and see if we can do some other temporary repairs and tell the, the major Yeah, even so fill those so holes yeah, exactly. before yeah. Walk Wisconsin. Yep. And, uh, some monsters. Some yeah. monsters yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll make some calls and see what we can do. Okay. I think the paver, like the paver ratings are like 0 to 10, if I'm right. <coughs> and pacer, the yeah. pacer. Yep. And I think pacer. it was rating like a 2 or something, which 0 is the lowest. Yeah. So. Pretty bad. Anyone, do you want to, <laughs> anyway, want to go take a look at it. <laughs> and filling holes is easy to do. Yeah. Um, but generally, there are, there are a lot of pretty bad roads yeah. that are going to wait longer. I've Probably seen some other ones too, but mm -hmm. you know, this is on the green circle, and I th you, get, yep. you do get a lot of usage, even if it's just not a lot of yeah. these. Yeah. Okay, folks. Any more questions for the director? If not, can we have a motion to adjourn? All right, John, motion to adjourn. I'll second. Second. All those in favor, please by, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, great. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.